Well, adapting to lockdown, like everyone else, means, I suppose, having arrangements with your family about who does their work in which room. Um, I think the first couple of weeks I had, um, my, my daughter was finishing off her work for her hire, so she had one room. So Meldrum Academy was in one room. My husband's a deputy, deputy head of Turf Academy, so he Turf Academy was in another room. And I actually um, thought I had symptoms of coronavirus. I actually wasn't feeling very well. So I had, didn't have the pick of the room. So I was banished to the bedroom. Um, and I did most of my work at that point from, from, from my bed and with, with uh, quite bad symptoms. Now that I'm better, I've been relegated to, to, to the living room. So I, I think it's one of those things of having to sort of arrange with your family, you know, because there's conference calls going on all over the place. So it's almost we've got our own mini timetable. Um, so that's been quite difficult. But as for working from home, I was actually quite used to working from home anyway because I run my own business before I, I was elected. So I'm quite used to, to working from home. And my teams have been very good. My, my, my constituency team have been great because um, we operate a very flexible office anyway. So we would do quite a lot of kind of like, you know, video conferencing as part of our week. So I think we've adapted quite well. I think it's a case of um, just recognising that, you know, uh, you're going to hear noises off from time to time, you're going to hear a doorbell going, and there's going to be a dog barking. But actually, I think people are quite enjoying that aspect of things when they see you on television with things going on in the background. Maybe it makes us feel more human to people. That's a good thing. Well, like everyone, we are having to figure out a way to do our work remotely and using social distancing. Um, of course, we've also had to, you know, look at our work programme and see what's what's necessary and pressing um, at, at this time and what can wait till after this, this emergency. Some of that's led by what the government feel is a priority in terms of legislation and some of it is uh, discussions that we're having. So at the moment we're we're meeting regularly. I'm certainly, you know, I'm, I'm in touch with the committee clerks every day about decisions that have to be made. But um, as far as the committee members go, quite quite a few of them are actually in the in the category that they, they, they can't come to the parliament, they, they can't leave home um, for, for various reasons. So we have been using, like everyone else, um, the technology to, to meet informally to discuss things like decisions about the work programme and what we do. But we've also had a very successful commit live committee meeting. And I'm very pleased to say that we were the first committee to actually pass um, um, SSIs, which effectively were, were the, let the part of the programme that we were going to be doing around the deposit return scheme. And we had very successful votes. We were the first committee the first Scottish Parliament vote to actually happen successfully. So we're keeping in touch, we're meeting every week, whether it's informally or formally, and we, as I say, we've got one successful committee meeting under um, our, our, our belt. But of course, the Parliament are having to look at the capacity as to what they can actually broadcast. So um, we need to be very careful that we, you know, we, we don't be asking for, for committee slots and things that aren't pressing. So we're we're, we're prioritising our work um, and seeing what we absolutely need to do in public. And one of the most difficult things potentially is um, the stakeholder views, but we're working on that at the moment. It hasn't actually come up. It's been a pressing issue right now because we did so much scrutiny before lockdown on the things that we actually got in front of us. But going forward, we're, we're working out how we can actually um, have our stakeholders in, in their, our committee meetings. You know, in a strange way, I've quite enjoyed it. I, I mean, that's no offence to my to my, my colleagues. I, I come from a background, I used to teach live television. So I, I, I actually got quite a kick out of actually working to a script. <laughs> it, it felt like old times. It, it was like it was like directing a, a programme. Um, what we did actually, uh, just a little bit behind the scenes kind of info, is that normally a committee, committee convener has a script anyway, so you make sure that you cover everything. What I, I did is I suggested that every member of the committee also have that script. So they knew what was coming. They knew what I was going to say. That was particularly, I think it actually worked out, been really useful. Um, so 
it, it's been fine. I think I think because committee meetings are very, very formally structured, no one really talks over one another. Everyone has to go through the chair in order to speak. It actually lends itself quite well to the sort of Microsoft Teams or whatever um, other other software people are using for these online meetings. So um, yeah, I actually uh, bizarrely quite enjoyed our first our first meeting and doing it uh, that way. Um, just it was quite funny. I, I I saw Mark Ruskell in the Parliament and uh, I socially distanced and had a conversation with him. And he, he he was joking that he felt that he had to sort of type something in the text box in order to speak to me. So we're actually getting used to the online meetings more than actual conversations at the moment. Yeah, we have had very intense conversations about what we prioritise. Um, I think because the priority for all committee and the whole parliament right now is uh, the response to COVID-19. And, and, and I guess we sort of like looked at, you know, what, what are the most pressing things from our portfolio with regard to the response to COVID-19? Um, it may appear uh, to the public at large that it's a largely like health and economic issue, but of course it's also an environmental issue. A lot of environmental um, organisations and bodies are having to have their own responses to, to the pandemic. Um, but we also were very um, acutely aware of some, well, we had legislation and regulations that were kind of, ha we were halfway through, I suppose. Um, I mentioned the deposit return scheme. We'd taken lots and lots of evidence. We were at the point where we were actually having to have those regulations um, voted on in our committee. Um, we were getting a lot of stakeholders asking where that was and how that was going to work and if it was going to be stalled as a result of this. So we had to take that into consideration and figure out whether or not we thought it was a priority or not, whether the government thought that was a priority. Um, and of course, uh, we were just about to go to stage two of the animal and wildlife uh, bill as well. So we need to working out whether we can actually have our stage two in a, a remote committee meeting, which I'm confident that we're going to be able to do. Of course, in the backdrop to all of this, we've got the um, we've got EU exit. EU exit is not changing according to the UK government. So we need to make sure that our work in the scrutiny of the EU exit and the impact on the environment, that still has to happen um, as well. I mean, we have got this pandemic, we've got this emergency situation, but we also have other situations, including, of course, the emergency situation of the global um, climate change emergency as well. Um, so one of the things that did change in terms of the government's programme, which impacts very solidly on the, the committee that I convene, is the climate change plan. So the climate updated climate change plan was due to be in front of us in the middle of April. And uh, so now the government has actually changed the focus of the climate change plan. It's going to be a green recovery. So it's very much going to have a kind of like climate change and the economy and the recovery from this pandemic, um, but with a real focus on reducing their emissions. They have said that that's going to be um, delivered by the end of the year. So we still have to work out a way to have scrutiny and oversight over that as well. Um, and, and other things, of course, happened as well. COP26 has been cancelled. So we these are all things that I think immediately, you know, we thought we still have to look at all of these things, we still have to find a way in order to, to scrutinise everything, to take evidence and to continue our work. And I think that we've, we've actually been doing quite a good job in that, if I may say so, um, because the parliament um, and the members have all been up for getting that work done somehow. I'm going to do, do a double um, a double thing because there's two things. Obviously, I'm really missing um, extended members of my family very, very much, particularly my son, who's at university in, at the moment. I can't wait to have us all together. I think everybody would be the same. But the first place that I'm going to go is to Newbury Beach, which is the place that I love the most in this whole whole world. 
but it's also where I usually take my dog and because I don't live in the village of Newbury, I can't drive to go to the beach. I um, have family members who live in Newbury and they're driving me insane by photographs of them taking their dogs to the beach. So the first thing I'm going to do when lockdown is lifted or any of the restrictions are lifted on travel to go and exercise is I'm going to go to Newbury Beach with my dog. <laughs>